Hey, this is Ken Finnan at Capital Advantage Tutoring. And today I'm doing a new test, the Series 3 under the NFA. The Series 3 test is about so you can trade futures and commodities and work for an NFA broker dealer. So if you're going to do futures, commodities, all those stuff, interest rate futures, any of that, you will need the Series 3. I'm not doing a whole thing yet. I'm not working on the book yet, but I'm going to give you a little chart that's going to help you. It's re- I mean, it's going to save your ass a million times. So let's get going. Okay, so the whole thing with the Series 3 is you have to understand futures and forwards and the regs and all that. So the test is a big test. So the Series 3 is a pretty big exam. It's 120 questions. You get a few hours to do it. But here's the real fuck you part of it. There's a regs portion, and then there's like the markets knowledge portion. It's not like you can get a 70% and pass it. You have to get a 70% on each section. I have lots of people came to me and they go, oh, I got an 80 on the regs. And then they get a 68 on the markets and then they fail the whole thing. They have to retake it. I have, and then they come to me and they go, well, I took it once and I did that. And then I focus on the markets and then they pass the markets and then fail the regs portion. So you have to get both. So really just get through the regs, memorize that. Then the, the math portion, a lot of it, you know, I'm a big person in reading, but I want you to read. And then I want you to do a bunch of questions. That's really how it is. But I'm going to show you a chart that is going to save your ass on a bunch of things. And then maybe I'll follow up in a couple of weeks or a week or so with how to do the hedging problems and the actual do the mathy part. Because once you get it down, test is cake. But you got to make sure you get the regs and then you get the math. So let's go. So this is what I do. I set up this chart. I have the top one and the bottom one because really everything comes down to this if it's hedging, okay? So the word cash, when you hear the word cash, they mean the commodity, whether it's oil, gas, crops, hogs, pigs, whatever you want to call it, feeder cattle, whatever it is, okay? Feeder cattle, it's not feeder cattle, it's feeder corn. So the point is, if you're the farmer or you're the producer, if you drill the oil and sell it, if you're the farmer, if you actually have the product, you're considered long the cash or long the basis. And what you would do is you're worried that the price will drop when you're going to go sell it, so you will sell a future, okay? So that's what's going to happen here. Let me get this out of the way so you can read it. So you can still look at my beautiful face. So again, if you own the product, you're in your farm and you're long the cash, long the basis, then you would sell a future always. Producers and farmers, people who own the thing, they have it already, they are own it, they're long, they would sell a future. That would lock in a price, okay? And what, I'll go into the whole futures later, what they are, but I just want to get this down. So if you're long the cash, long the basis, you're going to sell a future to protect it if the price goes down, you can still sell it at a higher price. That's called a selling hedge because you're selling, hedging it by selling your long cash. Now, what that also means if you have a long the basis, you want it to strengthen. And it's, it's a weird concept, but the whole point is you want the money you make on the cash part to be more than you lose on the future. Or the other way around is if they both go down, you want the money you lose on the cash to be less than what you lose on the future. So you want to make money. The whole goal is to either make more than the future on the cash or lose less than the future on the cash. Now, in a normal market, think about this. So if I have right now crops right now at 50 cents a bushel and I want to sell a future three or four months down the road, that is normally going to be a higher price because there's carrying costs and risk and all that. So the point is a future will almost always in a normal market be trading at a higher price than the cash. So let's do do a little Matthew math down here. Let's say the cash price is 50 cents a bushel. doesn't matter what it is. And the future is 0.65, okay? So that's 15 cents. So the difference, that means it's 15 cents under. So whenever you hear the word over or under, it's going to be cash blank future, meaning that when they say is the price under or over, they're talking about how is the cash versus the future. So in this case, the cash is 15 cents under the future. So it's the basis is 15 under. So it's 15. So put a 15 here. Okay. Now it's 15. And if it's a, and I'm along the basis, I want that to narrow. I would like that to get less. So I would love it for the future to go to like, you know, 67 and the cash to go to like 58. Let me make it easier so I can do it. 57. So now there's only a 10 cents difference. So it narrowed. That's what I want in a normal market. If I'm on the basis this way, 
I made seven cents on the cash, but only lost two cents on the future. You remember I sold it. So I made seven cents on the cash, lost two cents on the future, and I made money. So in reality, I, my basis narrowed by five cents. So I actually made five cents. That's in a normal market. That's what I want. Now let's change it up a little bit. Let's do a racing thing. Boom, 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 boom. Now let's say the actual, it's going to be, let's say the cash is 50 cents, but let's say the future is 0.40 cents. That's an inverted market. Let me even put it under here so it looks better. It's an inverted market. I could have done that before and done made it look even better. But that's because the future is under, well, we did shift. Oh, let's say, because the cash price is higher than the future. So it's considered over. So in this case, we're 10 cents over because it's 10 cents higher. So here's, we're 10 cents over, okay? And then what happens is we would like it to widen. We would like this cash to go up more than the future goes up. We would love it to make money for it to go to like 55 and this go to like 42. So then we have a 13 cents or a 13 cents over and we're making money. I try to equate it this way. Say you guys are running track and there's a person ahead of you. You're chasing them. You're the cash, they're the future. So in a normal market, you're behind them. Kind of the way I run, I'm normally behind everyone because I'm a fat piece of shit. Um, used to not always be, but now I am. So I'm running behind them. So I'm going to try to catch them. So that's a normal market. And I'm trying to close the gap. I'm trying to get closer to them to narrow the gap. That's a normal market. Now, if I pass them, that becomes an inverted market. And I want to widen the line. So what happens is here's the future. Here's the cash. We want them to both go up. But we want, if we're long this, we want it to narrow, narrow, strengthen, strengthen, narrow. And then once we pass the cash, if it's higher, we want it to widen because we want to make that as much as possible. So that's the way I think of it. So in, in a normal market, you want if you're long the basis, you want you want it to strengthen and you want the gap to narrow. And then if it goes inverted, then you still want it to strengthen, meaning the cash is making more than they're losing on the future. And um, then you want it to widen. So in this case, it went from 10 cents basis to a 13 that got wider. So we're making money. Okay, so let's try the other thing. Let's say I don't own the crop. So let's say I promised to deliver crops, right? Let's say I'm a middleman for a bunch of pizza places, right? And they have they want grain to build their pizzas, whatever it is. So I pro I make a deal with the pizza place to sell them grain at say 40 cents a bushel. I'm worried that when I go to buy the actual grain from the commodity from the farmer, it's going to be higher than 40 cents. So I'm considered short the basis because I've sold it already. So if I've already have a contract to sell it, but I haven't bought the product yet. So I'm short the basis, okay? So I'm short and I'm worried it's gonna go up. So I'm gonna buy a future. I'm gonna buy a future so that even if it goes up, I lock in a price. That's called a buying head. So again, if I'm short the cash and I don't own it, I either am going to buy it or I don't own it yet. I'm can short the basis. I would buy a future to lock in a price and that's called a buying head. And now what happens is I want that to weaken. Since I'm short the cash and long the future, I would like the future to go up more than the cash goes up. So I make money on the future more than I lose on the cash. And when they go down, I want the cash to drop more than the future goes down. So I make more money on the future, on the cash going down than I lose on the future. Again, I'll follow that up. Just remember this chart. So now what do I want to happen? So when, if I'm short the basis, I want the, the, the basis to widen, right? So if I have a future here of you know, that thunder 60 cents, and I have a cash of 50 cents. Now I sold this. I sold it at 50 and I bought it at 60. So I'm, I'm still 10 cents under. Okay, so 10 under. But I'm short it now. So I want, I would like the future to go up to 67. And I would like the cash to only go up to like 55. Okay. So that means I would make two cents because that would be 12 cents under. And I make money because I would make seven cents on the future because I'm long the future. I make seven cents on the future, but I only lose five on the cash. So I make two cents. And that's the difference between the two. Sometimes, sometimes that's all they want is to know the difference in basis. So again, if I'm short the cash, I want it to widen. I want it to weaken and I want it to widen. Now let's jump over to the inverted market, which is, you know, inverted. Everything's a little opposite. I'm going to race. So we're going to bring these over here so they look right. Oh, no. Boom. We're going to say the future is at 60. And let's say the cash is 
erase that. Let's say the cash is 65. So that's an inverted market. I'm still short, but I want, I still want to make money. I still want it to weaken, but what I want to happen is I want it to narrow. I would like this future to go up 67. And I would like this to go up to 68. So before it was, five cents over, right? That's what it was. And now it's only going to be, what did I do wrong? Oh yeah, duh, I'm an idiot. And now it's only going to be 0.01 over and that narrowed, so I made money. How did I make money? Well, I lost three cents on the cash because I sold it at 65 and it went to 68. So I lost three cents, but then I bought the future at 60 and sold it at 67. So I make seven. So I lost three and made seven. I made four which is the difference between the five cents over and the one cents over. So that's kind of a chart that we need to understand. So if you can memorize this, that will solve a lot of your problems because sometimes they'll say, oh, I want this or that. And I am, you know, what do we want to happen? So if you know that you're long or you own the product, you're going to sell a future. If you're short the product, you're going to buy the future. Now, one thing, sometimes people are confused by this. If again, don't give up, don't put on it yet. So if you have a treasury, we talk about the treasury futures, which we'll get into. Um, debt futures, if you have a corporation who's going to issue the bonds, right? So they're going to issue bonds, then they actually own the bonds still. So they were long. So if your company is going to issue bonds, they're going to sell futures to hedge it. Because remember, if I'm going to issue it, I'm worried that the rates will go up and I have to issue the bond at a lower price to get the better rate. So I will, if I'm long the bonds, which means I'm going to issue, I'm going to sell futures. Guys, again, write this down when you do it. We'll get there. We're going to go through a bunch of other things, but I have three or four tests I'm trying to get through. I hope to do some of the problem solving next weekend. Guys, series three is going to work. Um, thank you for joining. Please like, subscribe, share, and let's do it.